our cells um, in our body are very important for our physiology. And one of the important characteristics of these cells is they have what's referred to as a semi-permeable membrane. So this semi-permeable membrane allows water and small molecules to pass across it, but larger molecules and many ions cannot pass across the membrane, at least not by themselves. They need like helpers in order to do that. Um, so osmosis is defined as the passage of these wa of water molecules and small molecules across the semi-permeable membrane of our cell um, from a solution of low solute concentration to high solute concentration. Now, this is like the appropriate definition of osmosis, um, but I always have trouble kind of visualizing this because I always think things move from a high concentration to a lower concentration. Um, in, Actually, you can describe osmosis this way as well. If you say that, if you imagine the water itself as being what's in a high concentration, the water is actually moving from a high concentration of water to wherever there's less water, um, which happens to be the exact opposite of what the solute is. So water moves from low solute concentration to high solute concentration um, as a way to try to dilute that solute even more to keep it um, consistent. So... All the words can be confusing without pictures, so let's take a look at um, the picture. All right, so here is a picture of two kind of chambers separated by the semi-permeable membrane down the middle. So again, the semi-permeable membrane in the middle is uh, permeable to water and small molecules, but not larger molecules. So in this case, the larger molecules are the ones here that you kind of see in the black. Pretend these are sugar molecules, right? So these are large sugar molecules that can't pass through this little pore, but the water molecules can. So the question is, is which way are the water molecules going to go? Are they going to go from left to right, or are they going to go from right to left? Well, remember we defined osmosis as water moving from low solute to high solute which means there's no solute over here on the right, and there's a higher solute over here on the left, so that means water is going to go from right to left in this case. And again, the way I like to think about this, just because it makes a little more sense to me, um, whenever something is separated by the semi-permeable membrane, water wants everything to be equal. So in a perfect world, like, let's say over here, I'm going to count one, two, three, four. I see five sugar molecules. So let's just pretend this is a five molar solution. I'm completely making that up, but I came up with five because there's five of them. So this is a five molar solution, and this is a zero molar solution over here because there's no sugar there. Um, in water's perfect world, everything would separate equally, and you would have 2.5 molar on both sides. But that can't happen because this sugar molecule cannot go over to the right because it can't fit through the pore. But water is still going to do its best to try to dilute that sugar molecule more. So the way that happens is water is going to go from right to left to try to dilute the sugar that's in that left chamber as much as possible. Um, osmotic pressure, this term down here on the bottom, osmotic pressure is the pressure that... Um, results from these different concentrations of solute across the semi-permeable membrane. So it prevents uh, additional solvent from going into the solution because of this uh, changing in uh, or the differing concentrations of solute across that semi-permeable membrane. Okay, so let's take a look at this um, in terms of blood cells. So if you were to take a red blood cell, which is what this guy here is, so you purify this from your plasma, and you put one red blood cell, and you put it in what we refer to as an isotonic, whoops, um, an isotonic solution. So an isotonic solution is going to be a solution that is equal to the body. So whenever I say equal to the body, it has the same osmotic pressure as the body. It has the same concentration of particles as the body. So an isotonic solution is going to be equal to the body. So 
Examples of this are 0.92% weight volume uh, sodium chloride solution or a 5% weight volume glucose solution, right? These are solutions that you could be given in a hospital, right? It would be referred to as an isotonic solution, right? This 0.92% um, sodium chloride solution is what a typical IV drip would be. Um, so you put a red blood cell in a, an isotonic solution, these arrows that are shown here, this one and then that one, basically say you're going to have an equal amount of exchange of water going out of the cell and then some into the cell. So in other words, going back to this slide, the water is going to move the same from left to right as it does from right to left because you have an equal amount of solute on both sides. Right? So that's an isotonic solution. Now, a hypotonic solution, the prefix hypo means low, so it means it's going to have a lower osmotic solution or osmotic pressure than body fluids. So that means the solution out here is going to have a lower amount of solute than inside of the cell. So in this case, um, pretend a hypotonic solution would be plain water, right? There's only water in here. Inside the cell, there's going to be water, proteins, uh, DNA, ions. There's going to be a whole lot of other stuff in there. So what happens um, in the case of this hypotonic solution is that the concentration of the particles uh, lower outside the cell than inside. So because of that, the water that's out here wants to rush into the cell to try to dilute what's inside the cell, trying to make it so that the concentrations are the same outside of the cell and inside the cell. So water goes into the cell. Well, the problem with this is the cell membrane that kind of surrounds the cell is going to be pushed larger and larger and larger as more and more water goes in. There's not room for the water, so that causes that cell membrane to swell and swell and swell, and eventually it'll burst. So for red blood cells, the swelling and eventually rupturing of those cells when it's placed in a hypotonic solution is called hemolysis, right? So hemolysis is whenever you put a red blood cell in a hypotonic solution, it's going to lead to it, it popping. Now, a hypertonic solution is just the opposite. So a hypertonic solution has a really high concentration of stuff outside the cell. So in this case, the water that's inside the cell is like, well, there's a whole lot of stuff outside. The water in here is going to want to leave the cell to try to dilute what's on the outside of the cell because of that difference in the osmotic pressure. What happens when the water diffuses out of the cell? It causes that cell to shrink and shrivel up, and that is referred to as crenation. Crenation. So hemolysis is swelling and bursting. Crenation is shrinking and, and um, shriveling up. All right, so we have cells where this, di this um, is important all the time, and that's particularly in the kidney. So in our body, blood goes through the kidney. Um, the kidney basically uh, helps remove things like urea and other waste products. So basically everything kind of moves through the kidney. The stuff that doesn't kind of get filtered through the kidney eventually gets uh, excreted through your urine. The stuff that gets filtered through the kidney gets put back into your bloodstream. So that would be like your water and your ions and other kind of important uh, things like that. So what happens when your kidneys stop working? Well, that can be a problem, right? Because we need our kidneys to be able to dialyze our blood to help get rid of these waste products. So when your kidneys stop working, scientists have invented kind of basically an artificial kidney. So if you've ever known anyone who's gone into for dialysis, this is kind of the way it works. So you have um, a connection with your artery, so your blood goes from your artery into this machine, and this is what is referred to as, like, as the artificial kidney. The blood comes in, and it goes through all of this, and then it enters into this dialysis tubing. Well, this dialysis tubing in the middle there, that is really what the, that kind of mimics the kidney itself. And the idea is that the small particles um, will kind of flow through all of that tubing, and then the larger stuff can't go through the membranes. And what happens is um, the stuff that uh, doesn't go through the membranes eventually 
just gets goes out through the drain. So you can see here it says to drain. So if it goes through here, the small particles, right, all the smaller things um, are going to go into this uh, into this mesh of filters here. The larger stuff is too large to enter, so it gets removed into the drains. That's where like your urea and waste products are going to go. Everything else kind of stays in here, and it's going to end up going back into your into your body this way, right through this into your veins. Um, in addition. We have this dialysis fluid, and this is going to be like a, an isotonic solution that has, you know, some ions similar to like your body and everything else, which kind of goes into this um, whole matrix here, which is going to also be put back in your body. So this idea of hemodialysis is a way to basically set up an artificial kidney to help filter out these waste products from your kidney. And again, this whole process occurs um, via osmotic pressure in the semi-permeable membranes.